Hey guys, it's Lexi, and in this video on alkane reactions, we're going to be talking about oxymercuration, demercuration. So here we have an oxymercuration, demercuration reaction. And the way that we know that this is oxymercuration, demercuration, is because we're reacting a double bond, or an alkene, with HgOAC2 and some sort of solvent, like water or alcohol. And then the second step, we have the sodium borohydride. And so what we're going to do here is, in the first step, the double bond is actually going to attack the mercury. So we've got the Hg, and it's attached to two OAC groups. And the double bond is going to come in and attack the mercury. And this reaction is going to follow Markovnikov addition. So that tells us that we're going to add the mercury to whichever side of the double bond that used to have more hydrogens. So if we look here, this side of the double bond had two hydrogens, whereas the left side had one hydrogen. And so that tells us that we're going to add our mercury to the right side here. And I'm going to go ahead and put the mercury on a wedge, but realistically the mercury could go on a wedge or a dash. Um, the reason for this is because the double bond is flat. So the geometry of the double bond is trigonal planar. And so that means that 50% of the time the mercury will add on a wedge and 50% of the time on a dash. So for now we'll talk about it adding on a wedge and then later we'll think about what product we could get if the mercury added on a dash instead. So what you might be thinking right now is that in this position I'm going to have a carbocation. And that's like what we saw with acid catalyzed hydration or hydrohalogenation. But actually in this example, we're not going to have a carbocation here. This is very similar to halogenation. The mercury actually has a lone pair. And so it is going to be able to donate a little bit of electron density to that deficient carbon. So instead of that carbon having a full positive charge or a carbocation, it's actually just going to be partially positive. And so that means that this reaction doesn't have a carbocation. So we're not going to have any carbocation rearrangements possible for this reaction since there is no carbocation. And I want you guys to be aware that sometimes the way that this intermediate is going to be shown on an exam or perhaps in a standardized test is the mercury is going to be in the middle here and the mercury is going to have a full-blown positive sign and this ion has a special name this ion is known as a mercurinium ion and so i want you guys to be aware of that just in case it shows up on an exam um, but the reason that we're not going to show it like that is it makes it a lot harder to understand the mechanism so now that we have our mercurinium ion, we're going to go ahead and proceed with the nucleophilic attack. So remember that in this example, water is going to be our nucleophile, but that can change. Sometimes you'll have methanol instead, for example, and we'll kind of touch on that later and how that will affect the reaction. So here I've got my water molecule, and the water is going to have two lone pairs on the oxygen. So those lone pairs are going to attack the partial positive carbon. So they're going to come around and attack the partial positive carbon, and then any electrons that the mercury is sharing is going to go, are going to go back to the mercury. So what we're going to get is our next intermediate. And the mercury is still going to be on a wedge. But I want you guys to think, if the water molecule attacks is it going to want to attack from the front face where there's this big mercury on a wedge? Or is it going to want to go from behind on a dash where it's less crowded? Well, the water is going to want to go on a dash because on the front face, on the wedge, we've got this big mercury in the way. So it's going to be better if the water molecule goes from the back face. And so that is why we're going to add the water on a dash. And after the water attacks, it's going to acquire a positive charge on the oxygen. And so we can't leave it like that. So we're going to have to have a neutralization step where a second water molecule is going to come in. And that water molecule is going to take away one of the protons from the water that attacked. And that's going to allow us to neutralize 
our final product here, or actually close to our final product here. And so we're gonna end up having this OH group on a dash, and then we still have our mercury. And the mercury is gonna be on the wedge still. And so what the second step of the reaction is gonna do with the sodium borohydride is really just gonna replace the mercury with a hydrogen atom. And you don't really need to know the mechanism behind how that happens for most schools and for most standardized exams. But I want you guys to know that it's gonna replace that mercury with a hydrogen. And so our product, therefore, is gonna still have that OH on a dash, and then the mercury gets replaced with the hydrogen using the sodium borohydride. So what we need to consider then is what if instead of the first mercury adding on a wedge, remember if we look over here, we had our mercury add on a wedge. What if instead it had added on a dash? If it had added on a dash, meaning it added on the back face, then when the water molecule went to attack in this step, the water would have wanted to come from the front face because there would have been this big mercury in the back crowding up that space. So the water would have wanted to attack from the front face. And if the water attacked on a wedge or in the front, we would have had the OH be on a wedge. So another product that we can get for this reaction is if the OH adds on a wedge. And the reason I care about the stereochemistry for this reaction is because if we look at this carbon with the OH, you'll see that I did create a new chiral center. And so I want you guys to think, what would be the relationship between my two products here? They would be enantiomers of each other. And so because I would form 50% of each enantiomer, that is known as a racemic mixture. So in this example, I have formed a racemic mixture with my two products. The final consideration that I want you to think about for this reaction is regarding the stereochemistry. So if the mercury attacks on a wedge, that means that the water is going to have to come from behind on a dash. Vice versa, if the mercury were to attack on a dash, the water would have to come from the front face on a wedge. That translates to the stereochemistry of the final product. If we look at our final product, the OH and the H are going to be opposite each other. That is known as anti-stereochemistry. And it's important that you guys remember that this reaction has anti-stereochemistry. So if the OH is on a wedge, then this hydrogen here would actually be on a dash. And in this example, we don't care too much about this carbon just because it's not a chiral center. However, it is important that you recognize that the reaction has anti-stereochemistry. So here we have another example of oxymercuration demercuration. Go ahead and pause the video and then you can check your work. Okay, so the first thing that we want to look at is understanding why this reaction is oxymercuration demercuration. We've got our double bond or alkene that we're reacting with the same set of reagents that we looked at before, the mercury, the water, and the sodium borohydride. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to draw the HgOAC, and remember that the double bond is going to attack the mercury. And because this reaction is going to partake in Markovnikov addition, we are going to put the mercury wherever there were more hydrogens. So if we look at the double bond, it used to have one hydrogen on the top and then two hydrogens on the bottom. So because there were more hydrogens on the bottom, we're going to add the mercury to the bottom side. And remember, we can add the mercury on a wedge or a dash. I'm going to go ahead and add my first mercury on a wedge. And because I'm adding the mercury on a wedge, uh, I also will have to consider later what product would I have gotten if the mercury added on a dash. So remember, the mercury is large and it's got this lone pair, so it can donate a little bit of electron density to this carbon. So instead of that carbon being a carbocation, it's just going to be a partial positive. So that's why we don't have any carbocation rearrangements. And then we're going to have our water molecule. So the water molecule is going to be the nucleophile. 
So remember, you always check here to see who your nucleophile is going to be. We've got the water again. So the water is going to attack the partial positive charge, and then the electrons that mercury is donating are going to all go back to the mercury. And because the mercury is really crowding up that front face because it's on a wedge, the water is going to attack from the back face on a dash. So now we can go ahead and draw what we have so far, which remember the mercury is still going to be on a wedge with the two OAC groups attached to it. Meanwhile, we're going to have the water that just attacked, it's going to be on a dash. And it's got the two hydrogens attached to it. It's got its lone pair and a positive charge. So we're going to have to neutralize that water that just attacked. And the way that we're going to do that is a second water molecule is going to come in and it's going to deprotonate the water that attacked. So these electrons are going to attack the hydrogen and then the electrons in the bond go back to the oxygen. And so that's going to allow us to get a neutral OH group. So now we're going to have our product here with the neutral OH group. But remember, we're not done. We still have to move on to the second step of this reaction, which is with the sodium borohydride. So the sodium borohydride is going to come in, and basically what it does is just replace the mercury group with a hydrogen. So instead of having that big mercury group there, we are going to replace it with a hydrogen. So the OH is still on a dash, and then the mercury, instead of having the mercury on a wedge, we're going to have our hydrogen on a wedge. But we talked about initially how the first mercury didn't have to add on a wedge. It could have added on a dash. If the first mercury had added on a dash, that means that the OH group would have had to add opposite. So another product that we could get in this reaction is the enantiomer where the OH is on a wedge, and then the hydrogen is on a dash. Again, we emphasized how this is an example of anti-stereochemistry, and the relationship between the two products here, because we have a single chiral center, these two are going to be enantiomers of each other. So we have our racemic mixture. 50% of each enantiomer for this reaction. One more thing to mention about this reaction is what if instead of using water as the solvent, we were to use methanol? I want you guys for practice to go ahead and try to draw out the full mechanism for this reaction, but what you'll find is the products that we're going to get, instead of having H and OH add across the double bond, we're actually going to be adding OCH3 and H across the double bond. So you could have an OCH3 on a dash and a hydrogen on a wedge. Or you could have the opposite where you would have the OCH3 on a wedge and then you're going to have the hydrogen be on a dash. So we still have that anti-relationship in terms of stereochemistry. And the thing to note here is that because I used methanol, I'm going to be adding the OCH3 and the H, OCH3 and H, instead of OH and H, which is what we saw normally when we use water as the solvent. Another quick thing that this is a great example of, if you look at the relationship between these two products, they're actually identical to each other. They're not enantiomers, and that's because I did not form a new chiral center. Two of these groups here, notably the methyls, are identical to each other. So this carbon here is not a chiral center. So these two products are really just the same product. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and also hit the notification bell so that you can stay up to date when I upload new videos.